Punk. Hi everyone and welcome to our online tutorial. For today's episode, we've partnered with Monsoon and are bringing you some fun. I will be showing you how to replace the sequins on this beautiful jumper. So as usual, sit back, relax, and we'll start mending. So as always to start, we're gonna go through our equipment. First off, I've got my nice small beading needle or in this case it's a sequin needle. We've got our matching thread so as you can see that blends in really nicely with the colour of the jumper itself. We then have our handy snips Sometimes when I'm doing these, I will use a tweezers. Uh, it's really handy just for picking up beads, um, mainly beads actually. I won't be using them today, but it is just a tool to keep handy if you just are so struggling to pick up what you're going to be sewing on. We then have our notebook. Now I don't want you all to panic, I'm not going to be giving you homework but what I am going to do, I'll show you now. This notebook is going to go inside the jumper, just bear with me because the jumper is going to be moving a little bit while I get it up through. So it's gone inside the jumper and it is going to sit right under where I'm going to be restitching those sequins. So it's in there now. Now, the reason I'm doing that is there has been so many times in the past where I have restitched beads, sequins, etc. And thought, oh, that's looking beautiful. Pick the jumper up and found out that I've stitched the front to the back of the jumper. So not really ideal. So I, I came across this just out of frustration one day and thought, I'll try this. And oh, it worked so perfectly that now I always have a notebook, a piece of card, anything that you can slide up inside the jumper. And also it gives you a nice base to put your needle into, um, making it much easier to pick up those tiny pieces of jumper that you're going to need to when restitching these sequins on. So we'll make a start. I've got my spare sequins that fell off. Now this can happen so easily. It can be just wearing a handbag strap will rub and they'll just flick off or in the washing machine, um, put a coat on and the sequins can rub against the, co the coat. Um, it's just, uh, it's an unfortunate thing that happens, but it does, it's quite, quite frequently happens. So, we're going to make our first um, stitch. So as you can see quite clearly, you can see the area where these sequins have come off. Now, if truth be told, you probably wouldn't notice it if you left them off. But on such a beautiful jumper, it's just such a shame not to keep it up to how it was originally. So I'm going to make a start. Um, 
Now, I'm going to start by filling in this small space here um, where two or three came off. So we're not going to knot our cotton because that can cause a bit of a lump in the jumper. So I've taken a tiny piece of jumper just there with my needle. I'm going to pull my thread till it gets nearly to the end. And then I'm going to do another small stitch as so. Now this is going to be what we call our stop stitch. Uh, when you're doing this, it's always a good idea just to keep hold of the end of your cotton so that you don't pull it back through on yourself again. And now you will see if I give it a gentle tug, that is securely positioned there. When we get to the end, what we'll do with our snips, we'll just go right, right in close to the jumper and nip it off. But I'll show you that. So our first sequin, now this can send you absolutely so frustrated, but I've found if you keep them in a little container like I've got, use the point of your needle and if need be, either flick it like I've just done, if you remember tiddlywinks, or take it to the edge of your container and just encourage the sequin onto the needle as so. So we've got our first sequin. There we go. So I'm gently going to encourage that down the length of the cotton to where I want it to sit. There we go. That's exactly where I want it. So I'm now going to bring my needle slightly underneath the position of the sequin and bring it out right next to where I want the next sequin to sit. And as you will see, if we gently pull the cotton through and then you just encourage the sequin to lay nicely as so. So we're now in the position of where we want our next sequin to sit. So again, our little tub and just choose whichever color you want. And I'm cheating this time, I'm taking it to the side flicking it onto the needle and then as so I'm going to gently encourage it down the length of the cotton into position where I want it to sit just so and now I'm going to bring my needle just slightly under the sequin again and out to where I want the next sequin to sit. Now, if you can, just put your finger on the sequin and as you pull your thread, it will then sit really nicely. So again, that was a silver one. So. I think this time we'll choose a black. Again, flick it onto your needle as so. So you've got your sequin on your thread. Gradually guide it down to where you want it in position. And now just manipulate it a little bit to sit where you want it. Use your finger and underneath and pick up a tiny little piece of jumper again. 
So we're going to place our finger gently on that, guide it into place, and then we've brought our needle in, taken a little tiny piece of jumper and brought it out exactly where we want that sequin to sit. And as you can see, it's starting to fill in that patch and make it just exactly like it was when you bought it. So we'll get another sequin. So we used a black, so I think we'll go for a silver just to keep it nice and even. So we've got our sequin on our needle. And we're going to guide it down. There it is. Guide it right down to where our needle came out, which is the exact position that we want the new one to go. And as you can see, that without any manipulation at all, is actually just sitting exactly where we want it. So I'm just going to keep it in position with my finger again. I'm going to come under, just slightly under, underneath that sequin and bring my needle out to where I want my next sequin to sit, which is going to be there. So just keeping hold of that sequin to keep it safe and secure. And there we go. As you can see, it's sitting really nicely. Um, so now we'll grab another one. I think we'll go for a black. Mm. Oh, there we go. That one popped on just nicely. They do behave sometimes. And then we're going to take it right down to the bottom of the jumper. And as you can see, I'm just moving that out of the way because that's our tail that we used to secure our cotton. Um, and just gently put that in position. And keep it secure. Now, as you'll see, I'm actually bringing the cotton to the, if I can show you that, that sequin is now in position and what I'm doing is bringing the cotton to the side of the sequin that allows it to lay nice and flat. If I'd taken it that way, one, it would have gone over all of the other sequins and two, it wouldn't allow me to bring the cotton out to this side of the sequin. Now, I think my finger is covering it slightly, but that's the sequin we've put on there. This is the side the cotton is coming out of, and this is where my needle is going in to come along and fill the gap, which is right next to it. Fiddly little job, but I have to say it is one of my most favourite jobs to do. I just love doing it. It's not often I can get to sit and just do some really nice close-up close, close -up work by hand. Um, and I do absolutely love doing it. So there we go, and we're going to come along now just slightly under the sequin and out to where I want my next sequin to sit. And you can see the benefit of that notebook. It 
Um, sounds really strange, I know, but it was just one of those ideas I had after getting so frustrated and now I don't do any beading or sequin work at all without having a notebook or a piece of card or a piece of anything really. Um, even a clean chopping board would do the trick um, just to stop you stitching the front to the back of the jumper because believe me when you've done three hours of this pick it up and think it's looking beautiful and then find you can't actually wear it so it just avoids all of that and as you can see these sequins that I'm placing in are just filling in that spot and bringing the jumper back to its former glory and uh, that is just so, so worthwhile. And really what we're all about is keeping lovely clothes lovely. So here we go and I do think that we are coming to the last couple now. Um, I think maybe I will put one there. As you, you're doing such close work and you're looking at it really closely, you do tend to see the areas that need filling in. So I think we're going to put a couple more here, just in, in that area there. And then we are there. And it sort of rings true with the amount of sequins I've got left as well. So one more. And let's see how it sits. Here we go, and this should now, I believe, be our last one. Yes. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a little finishing off stitch again, as we did to start. And because the cotton is such a great match, you don't, you won't actually see it at all. There we go. So now we come to our little tail. So we're going to grab our snips. Now, obviously this is a little bit, you do have to be extremely careful. Now, the best way I've found is to put the points of the snip over your cotton as so, and then just very gently rest your snips on the jumper. Hence, no holding jumper, which is always great. And, and by doing it that way, what happens is you are having the, the width of the blade between the end of the cotton and where you're going to snip. So it just gives you that little guideline um, and stops you from catching the jumper. And there we have our completed sequins stitched back on to the area that they had come off and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Bye.